Hello, how you doing? In this video, I'm going to talk about pinecone upserts and deletes. Have you seen how easy it is to use pinecone's native client library to perform upsert and delete operations? Well, if not, then watch along with me for the next few minutes and I'll quickly show you how easy this is. Okay, let's get started. Before we get into upserts and deletes in pinecone, first, you'll need to get a pinecone account and second, you'll need to get an API key. In my previous Pinecone video, where I introduce Pinecone indexes, I cover what you need to do for both of these steps. If you want to see this in more detail, feel free to go back and watch this video, but for now, I'm going to keep moving along. In this video, I'm going to show you examples in Python, but you can integrate to Pinecone natively with a variety of languages. Pinecone has SDKs for Python, Node.js, Java, .NET, Go, and Rust. The Python code I show you can be executed using a Jupyter Notebook or any Python code IDE, such as Visual Studio Code. The first thing you will do if you follow along with me in this Python code is you'll import time, and then you'll import the Pinecone and serverless spec classes. This brings in all your dependencies into the Python runtime. Next, you instantiate a Pinecone object and you pass it your API key. The Pinecone object will use this API key for REST API calls to the Pinecone backend in the cloud. Before we can upsert vectors into the index, we need to create the index. To do this, call pinecone.createIndex, where you will provide a number of parameters. In my previous video on Pinecone indexes, I step through each of these parameters in detail. I will cover these parameters quickly. First, I pass the index name. Then I pass the dimension parameter. Normally, the dimension will be a much larger number, but for this example, I'll set the dimension to three so I can easily demonstrate visually the vectors in the Pinecone database after the upsert and delete operations. I keep the metric parameter set to cosine. Note, the index creation is wrapped inside of an if block that checks if the index is already created and if it is, we skip and move on. Otherwise, we create the index. After the index is created, we get a Python object that references the Pinecone index. We use this Python index object reference when we perform CRUD operations on the index. Using this Python index object reference, we can upsert vectors into the Pinecone index. Here, I insert four vectors with IDs of A, B, C, and D. After this, I read them back using a fetch operation. I then print out the results to the console. Here are the results printed out to the console. You can see the vectors A, B, C, and D are all in the pinecone index. So quickly, let's take a minute and visualize these vectors in 3D space. You'll see that visually, we now have four vectors in the pinecone index. So how do we remove vectors from a pinecone index? Well, it turns out this is pretty easy. Here's the Python script that performs a delete operation. We start off by setting things up similarly to our previous upsert script. But for deletes, you can see that we call the index.delete, passing it an array of vector IDs. I delete the vectors with IDs A and B. After this, we can perform a quick test by fetching all of the original four vectors. The call returns the fetch results that we can print out to the console. You can see vectors A and B are no longer in the index, and we only get back vectors C and D. This confirms that we successfully deleted the two vectors A and B from the pinecone index. Visually, you can see that now we have only two vectors in our pinecone index. Okay, now you should have a basic understanding of pinecone upsert and delete operations. For upcoming videos, I'll be showing how to perform pinecone index fetches and queries. Now, I know what you're thinking. We just saw the fetch operation, right? Yeah, we did. We got a preview on fetches as we use this operation to help prove out that our upsert and delete operations worked. But I'm still going to encourage you to check out the next video so you can get a full understanding of how we can leverage Pinecone query operations in your LLM-driven systems. Okay, thanks for watching. This video, along with all my other videos in the Vector Databases playlist, or listen in the YouTube description. I invite you to watch other videos on my channel. 
If you like the way I'm sharing this content, please consider subscribing. When you subscribe, this really helps my channel grow. One last thing, we all love technology and we're all excited about all the innovation in the cloud and machine learning and AI, but don't forget to carve out some time to live in the real world. Go outside, go swimming, go hiking, go climbing, go surfing. Do not move your body. And if you do, tell me in the comments. I wanna hear about it. And with that, have a great day, thanks.